These English and German lines, having come to a friendly understanding regarding freights, work the bites of Benin and Biafra and Panavia without any rivals, save now and again the vessels chartered by the African Association to bring out a big cargo and the four sailing vessels belonging to the association which give an 18th century look to the rivers and have great adventures on the bars of Apopo and Bonny. The Bristol ships on the half jack coast are not rivals, but a sort of floating but a sort of floating factories shipping their stuff home and getting it out by regular lines of steamers. The English and German liners therefore carry the bulk of the trade from the whole coast. Their services are complicated and frequent, but perfectly simple when you have grasped the fact that the English lines may be divided into two subdivisions, Liverpool boats and Hamburg boats, either of which are liable when occasion demands to call at Havre. The Liverpool line is the mail line to the more important ports, and the Hamburg line being almost entirely composed of cargo vessels calling at the smaller ports as well as the larger. There's another classification that must be grasped, the English boats being divided into, firstly, a line having its terminus at Sierra Leone and calling at Isle de Los, secondly, a line having its terminus at Acasa, thirdly, a line having its terminus at Old Calabar, fourthly, a line having its terminus at San Paul de Lo Lo Loanda, and addition, a direct line from Antwerp to the Congo, chartered by the Congo Free State Government. Division 4, the Southwesters, are the quickest vessels as far as Lagos, for they only call at the Canaries, Sierra Leone, off the Cru coast, at Akura, and off Lagos. Then they run straight from Lagos into Cameroons, without touching the rivers, reaching Cameroons in 27 days from Liverpool. After Cameroons, they cross to Fernando Po and run into Victoria and then work their way steadily down coast to their destination, thence up again, doing all they know to extract cargo, but never succeeding as they would wish, and being so hungry in the hold when they get back to the bite of Benin, they are liable to smell cargo and go in after it, and therefore are not necessarily the quickest boats home. Two French companies run to the French possessions, subsidized by their government, as the German line is, and as our lines are not, the Chargeurs Renews and the Fresnet. The southwest coastliners of these companies run to Gabon and then to Kutona, Kutonu, Kutunu, up near Lagos, then back to Gabon and back as, and down as far as Lagona, Lag, La, Logon, Lon, Lag, Lonago calling on their way home at the other ports in Congo Francais. They are mainly carriers of import goods because they run to time and on the southwest coast, unless time has an ameliorating touch of eternity in it, you cannot get export goods off. Below the Congo, the rivals of the English and the German lines are vessels of the Portuguese line, Empres Nacional. These run from Lisbon to the Cape Verde Islands, thence thence to San Tomé and Principe, then to the ports of Angola, Leona, Bangulea, Mosamedes, Ambrese, etc. And they carry the bulk of the Angola trade at present because of the prefer preferential dues on goods shipped in Portuguese bottoms. The service of English vessels to the west coast is weekly, to the rivers fortnightly, to the southwest coast monthly, and it is the chief thing in West Coast trade enterprises that English has to be proud of. Any one of the English boats will go anywhere that mortal boat can go, and their captain's local knowledge is a thing England at large should be proud of, and the rest of the civilized world regard with awe-stricken admiration. That they leave no room for further development of ocean carriage has been several times demonstrated by the collapse of lines that have attempted to rival them, the Prince Line, and the more recently, and more recently, the General Steam Navigation. But although the West Coast trader has at his disposal these vessels, he has by no means an easy time or cheap methods of getting his stuff on board, save at Sierra Leone and in the oil rivers. Of the Gold Coast Surf and Lagos Bar, I have already spoken, and the Kalena, Kalena, as we call the Southwest 
Coast surf is nearly, if not quite as bad as that on the Gold Coast. Indeed, I hold it is worse, but then I have more, I have had more experience of it, and it has frequently to be worked in nav native dugouts and not in the well-made surf boats used on the Gold Coast. But although these surf boats are more safe than they are, they are also more expensive than canoes, as a fine 40 pounds or 60 pounds surf boat's average duration of life is only two years in the Gold Coast surf. So there is little to choose from a commercial standpoint between the two surfs when all is done. As regards interior transport, the difficulty is greater, but in the majority of the West Coast possessions of European powers, there exist great facilities for transport in the network of waterways near the coast and the great rivers running far into the interior. These waterways are utilized by the natives, being virtually roads, in many districts practically the only roads existing for the transport of goods in bulk or in the present state of the trade required to exist. But there is room for more white enterprise in the matter of river navigation, and in my opinion it is that if English capital were to be employed in the direction of small, suitably built river steamers, it would be found more repaying than lines of railway. Waterways that might be developed in this manner exist in the Cross River, the Volta, and the Ancobra. I do not say that there will be any immediate dividend on these river steamboat lines, but I do not think that there will be any dividends immediate or remote on railways in West Africa. This question of transport is at present regarded as a burning one throughout the continent, and for the well-being of certain parts of the West Coast railways are essential, such as at Lagos and on the Gold Coast. Of Lagos, I do not pretend to speak. I have never been ashore there. Of the Gold Coast, I have seen a little and heard a great deal more, and I think I may safely say that railway making would not be difficult on it, for it is a good hard land, not stretches of rotten swamp. The great difficulty in making railroads here will consist in landing the material through the surf. These difficulty cannot be got over, except at enormous expense, by making piers, but it might be surmounted by sending the plant ashore on small bar boats that could get up the Volta or a co and co Cobra. When up the Volta, it may be said, it would be nowhere when it would be nowhere when anyone wanted it. But the cast iron idea that goods must go ashore at places where there are government headquarters like Akara and Cape Coast, places where the surf is about at its worst, seemed to me an erroneous one. The landing place at Cape Coast might be made safe and easy by the expenditure of a few thousands in developing that rock which at present gives shelter when you get round the lee side of it, but this would only make things safer for surf boats. No other craft could work this bit of beach, and there is plenty of room for developing the Volta, as it is a waterway which a vessel drawing six feet can ascend 50 miles from July till November and 30 miles during the rest of the year. The worst point about the Volta is the badness of its bar, a great semicircular sweep with heavy breakers, too bad a bar for boats to cross, but a steamer on the Lagos bar boat might manage it, and the bullfrog reported in 1884 19 to 21 feet on it, one hour before high water. The absence of this bar boat and the impossibility of sending goods out in surf boats across the bar causes the goods from Ada, Riverside, the chief town on the Volta, situated about six miles up the river from its mouth, to be carried across the spit of land to Beach Town and then brought out through the sh shore surf, the worst bit of surf on the whole Gold Coast. The Ancobra is a river which penetrates the interior through a district very rich in gold and timber, and more than suspected of containing petroleum. It is from 80 to 100 yards wide up as far as Ankanko, and during the rains carries three and a half to four and a half fathoms, and boats are taken up to Tomento, about 40 miles from its mouth with goods to the Wasa gold mines. But the bar of the Ancobra is shallow, only giving six feet, although it is firm and settled, not like that of the Volta and Lagos, and the Portuguese, 
in the 16th century used to get up this river and work the country to a better profit than we do nowadays. The other chief of Gold Coast River, the Bossom Pra, that enters the sea at Chama, is, of, is no use for navigation from the sea, being obstructed with rocks and rapids, and its bar only carrying two feet. But whether these rivers are used or not for the landing of railway of a rail of railroad plant, is it is certain that, that the plant must be landed and the railway made, for if ever a district required them, the Gold Coast does. It is to be hoped it will soon enter into the phase of construction, for it is a return to the trade from which it draws its entire revenue that the local government owes, and owes heavily. And if our new acquisition of Ashante is to be developed, it must have a railway bringing it in touch with the coast trade, not necessarily running into Kumase, but near enough to Kumase to enable goods to be sold there at but a small advance on coast prices.